Okay, so before we uh, launch into our first chapter of language proof and logic, it might be worthwhile um, to follow up with our introduction by talking a little bit about the sentence types that we will be studying. Uh, doing so may, I, at least I hope, um, help you to um, not feel overwhelmed when things get complicated. If you think about the fact that at the end of the day, we're dealing with either atomic, um, also known as simple sentences, and compound sentences, then it might feel a little less overwhelming when we get into um, rather complicated structures. So what I thought I would do is uh, give you a very brief overview of the sentence types that we will use in the language of first order logic. All right, so before we get into some of the details of our overview, let me begin by setting up um, the most panoramic picture that uh, I can think of, which is, uh, which includes, I should say, the types of sentence that we will be dealing with in this course. So um, the first thing to say is that a sentence of the sort that we're dealing with is declarative or prescriptive. As such, it is either true or false. In other words, um, we'll use this language continuously, uh, repeatedly, I should say, a sentence has a truth value. So when we're working in logic, we're interested in those sentences that um, have a truth value, that is, those sentences that are either true or false. In some versions of the system that we'll learn, in fact, typically, these sentences are called statements. And these are distinguished from other sorts of sentences. For example, um, an interrogative, how are you? Um, a command, shut the door, or an exclamation, hello, right? Those are um, not sentences that are um, candidates for an argument. An argument is constituted by two or more statements, one of which is inferred from the other or others. So um, you can think about it this way. In logic, we are concerned with truth. All argumentation is aimed at establishing a sentence where, I mean, all arguments are aimed at establishing uh, a truth. In first order logic, the, in the version of the system that we're looking at, there are two types of sentence. There are atomic or simple sentences and there are compound sentences. So if you think about, um, you know, let's say midway through the semester when we're looking at truth functionality and then when we're looking at derivations and you might be feeling a little bit um, overwhelmed, it feels complex, feels mentally complex, just remember that uh, ultimately we're dealing with two sentence types, uh, atomic or simple sentences and compound sentences. Now more about what that means in a moment, but this I hope is a nice sort of conceptual hook. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, atomic sentences are singular or quantified. Compound sentences are also singular or quantified. Now just very briefly, because I'm about to explain what that means in subsequent slides, um, an atomic sentence, also known as a simple sentence, is a sentence that doesn't have a connective. It's a sentence that cannot be um, reduced. In other words, you cannot eliminate words from the sentence without thereby eliminating its status as a statement. That is, uh, without thereby eliminating its truth value. So why is it called an atomic sentence? Well, because at the time that this uh, uh, system was developed, um, atoms were thought to be the uh, simplest entities out there, that is, entities that couldn't be further reduced. Of course, we found out since then that that's not the case. Um, a compound sentence, on the other hand, is a sentence that contains at least one atomic or simple sentence, as well as a connective. So more on that now, uh, but if you um, think of this slide as kind of your orienting slide, as kind of the the um, conceptual hook on which you can hang your basic understanding, then you'll be in good shape um, anytime, if you remember it, anytime that you feel like things are a little bit complicated. Let's move on. So we have atomic, also known as simple sentences, and these are um, sentences 
that involve uh, individually named entities as well as what is ascribed to them. So we'll learn some technical terminology for the individually named uh, entities label as well as the um, label what is ascribed to them. But for right now, uh, let's just keep it as uh, uncomplicated as possible. Um, let me also point out that um, a simple or atomic sentence is um, a sentence that does not involve any sort of connective. So you might ask, why atomic? Um, well, um, we think about a sentence as atomic because at the time that uh, this uh, system was being developed, the atom was the simplest uh, known entity in the universe. That is, the atom was thought to be um, uncuttable or um, uh, the um, substance that can't be further broken down. We know now that that's not the case, but um, that was what was thought at the time that this uh, logical system um, was developed. So we call simple sentences atomic sentences. These are sentences that can't be broken down further without losing a truth value. So we'll talk more about that later, but let me give you a couple of examples. Stuart is a dog. Stuart is the named entity and dog is the predicate or that which is ascribed to the named entity, Stuart. In addition, I mentioned that atomic sentences do not involve connectives. And when we get to the logical notation that we use in our artificial language, um, sometimes uh, these, you'll see that sometimes these are, are called uh, operators. In any event, when we're talking about an atomic sentence, we're talking about a sentence that doesn't have uh, language such as not, it is false, that, and, or, and, if, then. In other words, we don't have a uh, language that you could eliminate from a sentence and still have a truth functional sentence. Compound sentences are those sentences that involve um, at least one atomic sentence and a connective, at least one connective. So I put in red um, the language that, that will be replaced by the logical notation we'll learn. It is not the case that Stuart is a cat. So Stuart is a cat is the atomic sentence of the singular variety. It's singular because it's about Stuart. It's a named entity. Um, and then the uh, language in red compounds the sentence because it negates it. Notice that you could eliminate what's in red and you'd still have a sentence. Now, if you were to eliminate uh, the predicate, you would just have the name Stuart and that is not a sentence. It therefore cannot have a truth value and therefore cannot be a constituent element in an argument. Here's another uh, example of a compound singular sentence. Brett and Al are cats. So and conjoins Brett is a cat with Al is a cat. Not both Brett and Joe are cats is a doubly compounded sentence. The simple or atomic sentences are Brett is a cat, Joe is a cat. These have been combined to get Brett and Joe are cats. And then the whole thing is negated. Not both Brett and Joe are cats. Here's another example. Either Al or H is a dog. You could also eliminate the either and you'd have logically the same thing. Al or H is a dog. Or uh, brings together by way of a disjunction the sentence Al is a dog H is a, with H is a dog. So you get the compound Al or H is a dog. Neither Joe nor Stuart is a cat, as you can see now, is the doubly compounded uh, sentence. And so of the, the two uh, atomic sentences, Joe is a cat, Stuart is a cat, you can see that 
by way of understanding that the two atomic sentences are brought together by the or, and then the whole thing is negated. And then lastly, if H barks, then Joe barks. You could get rid of the then, and you'd have the same thing logically, if H barks, Joe barks. As you already know, it's not the case that we just talk about individually named things. In other words, our atomic sentences and our compound sentences are not exclusively singular. We oftentimes use references to, or sorry, let me rephrase that. We oftentimes use the language of classes or groups of things, that is, unnamed things. So we're talking in our system of logic about what are known as quantified sentences, uncompounded sentences that do not name an entity, but instead are about individual, or sorry, are, are instead about classes of things, are atomic quantified sentences. So when we're talking about dogs as a group, not specifically, for example, Stuart, Joe, or H, we would use a quantifier. If we're talking about college in general, or colleges in general, not specifically, for example, Pierce College, Occidental College, or Valley College, we'd use a quantifier. What sort of quantifier? Well either what's known as a universal or an existential. The sentences that we're talking about are either about everything in a class, so they're universally quantified sentences, or at least one thing in a class. So we're talking about the existence of at least one thing. Maybe more, but at least one thing. So. For an atomic quantified sentence, we have, as an example, everything is wonderful. Someone is nice. Now, the universal quantifier refers to all or everything, and the existential quantifier refers to at least one thing, which we typically um, translate or, or um uh, articulate, I should say, as some or there is something. Now, I've used uh, the language someone, and you might say, well, aren't you talking about uh, people, right? Someone is nice. So you would say, there is something, the thing is a person, and the thing is nice. That now is a compound quantified sentence, and you'd be right. But as you'll notice, um, depending on what you assume to be your domain of discourse, you would say something like this. I'm assuming persons to be the domain of discourse. And so when I say someone is nice, I'm going to use the single class of nice things and my existential quantifier. I'm not going to further articulate another class of thing, namely persons. In addition, in our daily lives, we oftentimes use multiple quantifiers in a single sentence. So here's an example. Everyone loves someone. We have, in this case, a universal quantifier and an existential quantifier, everyone, someone. And then we have the relationship expressed by the relational predicate loves. We also could say someone is to the left of everyone, and the implication here is else, but um, more on that sort of thing later. The point is that, again, we have an atomic sentence, but this time we're talking about a relation that's not about uh, uh, feelings. We're talking about a spatial relationship. So we say there is something, someone, it is left of everyone else. Lastly, here are some examples of compound quantified sentences. So you already know that a compound sentence involves one or more connective and at least one atomic sentence. 
So we have, it is not the case that everything is perfect. Everything is perfect is the atomic sentence. What's in red is the connective negation expressed by the ordinary language phrase, it's not the case that. Nothing is on the schedule. Here we have the uh, negation of a quantifier. So another way to say this is everything is not, but that's awkward in our ordinary language. We wouldn't say everything is not on the schedule. Um, but if we were to say, for example, um, uh, everyone is not happy when we mean no one is happy, we would be able to use uh, um, either interchangeably. Dogs and cats are animals. The verb are is going to be translated with a connective, which we'll see as when we get there. But you get the idea. We're talking about the class of dogs, the class of cats, the class of animals, and our logical notation has to articulate their relation. Lastly, some of the students do not like every assignment. We have at least one student that does not like every assignment. So we have the existential sum, we have the group of students, and we have the things liking every assignment. There is an implied connective in this sentence. You're going to get comfortable with this as we move forward, but the short story here is, as with the dogs, cats, and animals groups um, needing to be related by way of connectives, it's also the case that the last sentence's elements, the groups specifically, have to be related by way of connectives. All right, I hope this very brief overview of the sentence types that we'll be studying in this course helps you to orient your thinking.